Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. Another beautiful day here in Denver, Colorado. Um, <laughs> ironically enough, I'm at a park here where they're doing um, like a, a wedding reception or a quinceanera or something like that. So everybody here is all dressed up and ready for marriage. And <laughs> I'm going to talk about divorce. Anyway, that's just how it panned out. <laughs> so let's get on with the message. Um, today, um, as I've said, I'm going to try to tackle the topic of divorce. You know, um, Did you know that if you get married in 2019, your chances of getting a divorce are higher than 50%? Yeah, that's a, that's a uh, fact right there. And, you know, going through divorce is, is one of the most painful things, you know, a person can endure. Um, the emotional and psychological stress can actually drive men to suicide. You know, did you know that you're two and a half times more likely to commit suicide after a divorce if you're a man? You know, and the overwhelming uh, majority of suicides are men, you know, and, and suicide is a big problem here in the United States. Um, it's actually one of the top leading causes of death. So the importance of this topic that I'm going to uh, discuss today could actually literally save your life. So um, pay attention. You know, divorce also devastating to children. You know, um, 50% of children will experience a divorce um, between their parents sometime in their childhood. And children from divorced parents are 50% more likely to develop some kind of health problem within their lifetime 71 percent of high school dropouts come from fatherless homes and 90 percent 90 percent of all prisoners come from broken homes fatherless homes so you know clearly divorce big issue big disaster in our society big crisis so uh this is a topic that needs to be discussed so with all that said i'm going to try to answer this question Whose fault is it, you know? Is it the woman's fault that divorce rates are so high? Or is it the men's fault? Or what's going on here? So before I begin, or where I'd like to begin here is, um, like always, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come at you from a biblical standpoint. Let's see what Jesus had to say about divorce, you know? Because basically in the Bible, they ask Jesus Christ this same question in Matthew chapter 19, verses 3 through 9, which I'm going to read here. Starting in verse 3, the Bible says, The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? You know, we see in this verse that the Pharisees, you know, they didn't come at Jesus asking him a genuine question. You know, it was a loaded question. The Bible says they were tempting him, right? Because let's face it, this topic can get, uh, can get you in trouble, you know, depending on the way you answer it, because both genders can get enraged. Um, ba based on the way you answer so nevertheless basically what they asked him was whose fault was it Jesus is 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 men to blame you know are men at fault for divorcing their wives for every cause and let's let's see what Jesus said here in verse 4 and Jesus answered and said unto them have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they twain shall be one flesh Wherefore, they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined us uh, together, let no man put asunder. You know, we see in Jesus' response here that he doesn't give them a direct yes or no answer. Instead, he quotes scripture. Very wise decision here. But notice his last sentence. He says, what God hath joined to, together, let no man put asunder. You know, so Jesus is basically telling us, when a man and a woman, they come together and they get married, God joins them together and those two become one flesh, right? And whoever breaks that bond is in the wrong. Now, um, to me, that's pretty cut and dry. That clears it up for me. Till death do us part, um, that's basically what the Bible says. But the Pharisees, you know, they weren't satisfied with that answer. So let's continue reading. And they said unto him, why did Moses then command to give us a writing of divorce man to put her away? And Jesus said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffered you to put away your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. 
And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whoso marrieth her which is put away, doth commit adultery. So basically, Jesus is saying here, yeah, you know, Moses did allow for this divorcement, but only in certain very uh, particular cases of infidelity, trickery, adultery, or lies, you know. It wasn't God's plan from the beginning for anybody to get divorced. You know, I think it's worth noting here also that the Bible carried a very big penalty for divorce, you know, or excuse me, for adultery. Adultery, you know, if you were a married person and you slept with somebody else, that was considered a, a felony crime. That was the death penalty, right? So if a woman or a man was caught in adultery, you'd be put to death. You'd be stoned to death, thus breaking the marriage contract and allowing you to go marry somebody else. But, you know, the interesting thing here is Jesus tells us that if you marry a woman who has been divorced, you become adultery yourself and vice versa. If you're, if you're um, a man who marries a, a woman who's been divorced, um, you become an adulterer, right? So back to my question, is divorce the woman's fault or is it the man's fault? Well, to answer this question, I'm going to dig a little bit deeper and look in the history. So, in the 1950s, right, not too long ago, just seven years ago, only 14% of marriages ended in divorce. Now, back then, it was seen as a shame to get divorced, right? Because most people got married and stayed married. 75% of women, uh, like I preached in my video lot, uh, yesterday, got married. Right, wives dependent on their husbands to provide them, uh, to provide for them and protect them and the family and the children. So, they weren't quick to commit adultery. They were, they weren't even getting divorced. You know, 14 percent is a very small number. You know, compared to what we see to uh, today. But what we saw in the 1970s, right, a radical change in culture. Feminism was starting to take off, and sexual liberation for women was taking off, and and the hippie generation of free love was um was taking off and what happened was the government changed the divorce laws you know they made it where anybody can get a divorce now for any reason you know they called it no fault divorce in other words before you can get a divorce you had to prove in the court of law that there was some sort of crime that took place whether it was physical abuse child abuse drug abuse or or adultery right you had to prove that in the, in the court of law um, before the 1970s to get a divorce you had to prove that your you know your your spouse was a, a criminal of some sort because back then um, they considered adultery a felony crime so adultery was grounds for divorce, for a divorce a legal divorce but in the 70s those laws all changed and you know more people were having sex before marriage and inside of marriages and, and open marriages and people were experimenting with free love and sex and, and drugs and out and all this stuff right and they would just go down to the courthouse, get these no-fault divorces, and meaning, you know, they didn't have to prove that their spouse was a criminal or, or anything. And they just said, you know, I don't want to be married anymore. And, and the court would grant that, you know. Basically, they were saying, hey, look, I want to commit adultery straight up. And, and, and you know what happened? We saw that the divorce rate instantly doubled. It, before, in the 50s, it was 14%. And in the 70s, it, it, went, it doubled all the way up to 30%, you know. Now, fast forward uh, just 50 years later to present day in 2019, the divorce rate skyrocketed to 50%. And that's just for first marriages, you know. It's a big, huge industry nowadays. It's, it's so big that they have whole courthouses dedicated just for family, just for divorce, right? But get this. This is the big one. This is the big kicker. 80% of all divorces nowadays are initiated and filed by the woman. Yeah, you heard me correct. 80% of all divorces nowadays are filed by the woman. You know, why is this? You know, I, mainly it's because women are awarded child cu custody, you know, trusted custody over the child 80% of the time, right? And and that other 20%, I mean, she's got to be like a really bad case and, and, and she'll still get partial custody, right? But men are forced to pay child support 85% of the time. You know, even though the woman wanted divorce, even though she's the one who went to the courthouse and filed the divorce, they're still going to make the man pay 85% child support to the woman. Um, or, excuse me, to pay child support 85% of the time. You know, and, and, and women, 
you know, they can go out there and find another man. All they have to do is a uh, swipe on their on their little smartphones, and and you know, there's no shame. There's no divorce uh, shame hanging over their head like there was in the 50s. You know, it's no problem. So basically, there aren't any repercussions in society for women getting a divorce nowadays. And my biggest point I want to make here, guys, is this: that you know, there's there's no shame anymore. There's no shame. You know. Uh, um, uh, people go through their second marriage, their third marriage. I mean, just look at Jennifer Lopez. She's on her sixth marriage. And absolutely no shame from society whatsoever. In fact, they're broadcasting all over the news as if it's a good thing. Like, oh, yeah, she's getting married again, right? Um, when Jesus said, remember, whosoever married, um, whosoever married her that is put away is an adulterer, right? Guys, we live in an adulterous generation here. And people want to talk about, you know, mass shootings and, and police brutality and government corruption. But guys, this divorce thing is a big deal. It's out of control, but you know, you don't hear anybody talking about it, you know. It's not on the news. It's, it's, it's very quiet, very hush-hush because, you know, people just, they want, to, um, they want to go out there and be whores. They want to um, go out there and live immoral lives. You know, personally, I'm not accepting it. You know, Jesus didn't accept it. And I think anybody who does accept it is either ignorant of the facts or if they do know the facts you know you're just a rotten person you're just an immoral rotten person so you know back to my original point here who is responsible for all the divorces nowadays is it women well i have i gave you guys the facts i gave you guys the, the statistics you know you be the judge you know but one thing is for certain if you want to see a change if you want this to change then you have the power to do something. You guys are the MGTOW guys with all the power. You can choose what what the destiny is and, and how to shape society, you know? Um, but uh, I know for me, my small part is my contribution is at least bringing awareness through these videos and not contributing and shaming these women and sh um, for uh, committing these adulterous acts. Anyways, at least I would argue we need to at least renew our minds, you know, start, start taking heed to what Jesus said and start understanding that, you know, divorce is wicked. You know, it's unacceptable in God's eyes. Adultery is a serious crime. It's a felony offense. It carries the death penalty and there shouldn't be such thing as no fault divorce, you know, but anyways, you know, that's my message for the day, guys. It's sickening having to live in a society full of all this adultery and divorce, but you know, the good news is we don't have to take part in it. We don't have to fall victim to it. You know, we don't have to um, fall into the sin of getting divorced. You know, we can go on our, we can go our own way, and we can protect ourselves. And we can remind people what Jesus said: "What God has joined, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder." Anyways, until next time, uh, this is Sean Alva signing off. And as usual, I'll be giving God the last word on this. So I'll see you guys next time. God bless. I'll be reading from the Old Testament, uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter three. Verses 16, the Bible reads, The Lord saith, Because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and making, and making a tinkling in their feet, therefore the Lord will smite with a, with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. In that day the Lord will take away the bravery of, the, of their tinkling ornaments, about their feet and their calls and their and round the and their round tires like the moon, the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers and the bonnets and the ornaments of their legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings and the rings and the nose jewels and the changeable suits of apparel and the mantles and the wimples and the crisping pins, the glasses, the fine linen and the hoods and the veils, and it shall come to pass that instead of the sweet smell there shall be stink, and instead of a girdle a rent, and instead of a well set of and, a, and instead of a well set hair, baldness, and instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth, and burning instead of beauty. Amen. <laughs>